Bu Cardoso with Creative Electron, and today we're going to look inside a radiation detector. More specifically, we're going to be looking at this uh, inspector alert. Uh, it's made by a company called uh, International Medcom. Uh, they're located right here in California. Uh, great uh, made in USA product, and it's one of the uh, radiation detectors we use uh, to inspect our X ray machines to make sure that there's no uh, excessive leakage out of our cabinets. So let's take a look exactly how these things work. Uh, I'm going to start with a quick introduction and explanation of how radiation detectors, specifically this type, which is a, a Geiger Mueller tube or GM tube based radiation detector, work. And then um, I'm going to show you our, our traditional X ray teardown. We're going to look at the X ray of this unit and we're going to map some of the uh, um, diagram that we see here uh, into the X ray. So, the, uh, the, the, the key component of this uh, radiation detector is the Geiger-Miller tube. The Geiger-Miller tube is nothing but uh, a cylinder, like this, uh, with, uh, uh, so with, with an internal uh, anode, and the uh, shell of the, uh, of the cylinder is uh, the cathode. Uh, the end of this uh, cylinder uh, can be made of uh, usually mica or some um, thin, very low Z material so that uh, uh, beta particles uh, can get inside and maybe even alpha particles can be de uh, detected by uh, the GM tube. Uh, the whole process of detecting radiation happens when an ionizing radiation you know, particle, um, uh, an X-ray or a gamma ray, uh, crosses the volume of this uh, cylinder. Uh, the cylinder has uh, gas inside and it is polarized with a high voltage, right? So you have, uh, you can have here, you know, four, 400 volts to, you know, 900 volts, depending on the GM tube that you're using. And um, so when this uh, X-ray or uh, gamma ray uh, hits uh, this uh, detector, a avalanche of uh, ions is created, which then creates a signal out of the cathode. So and you detect the signal by uh, putting a resistor here uh, to ground, for example, just to, to a reference point, and you're going to collect a signal that's going to be you know, a little spark, if you will, inside this uh, cylinder. Then, you know, to, to get this signal, which is you know, high voltage and is quite noisy into electronics that you can actually read into you know, uh, a nice display like this one, uh, what you do, you know, the simplest form is just uh, put a decoupling cap so that you, you know, get rid of a lot of the DC that might be coming from this circuit uh, uh, limit and then just put a transistor here that's then put this guy to VCC, this guy to ground and this signal is going to be inverted of course but from that point on uh, you're going to have a uh, a wave that you can then take and, um, and read into a microprocessor, you can read into uh, um, an Arduino, a PIC, whatever else uh, circuit you want to use. Uh, what's in interesting is that the difference be th this guy here, right, it counts particles, right? It, it basically gives you uh, a hit for each X-ray photon that, that, that crosses uh, this volume. You don't really have information on the energy of that particle. Uh, lower energy X-ray uh, has uh, the same, uh, it's going to have the same signature as a higher energy X-ray. So, this is not, uh, it doesn't give you any spectral information on the radiation coming uh, that you're reading, right? So, uh, there are other types of detectors like scintillator detectors, uh, semiconductor uh, detectors like cadmium zinc telluride or, or cadmium telluride detectors that uh, produce a signal that is proportional to the energy of the particle uh, of the uh, gamma ray or x-ray hitting the detector. Uh, and those then allow you to create a spectrum out of that detector. But again, this time the GM geiger Mueller tube will not allow you to do that. What you do is a reading. Uh, that there is a, a variation of um, the response as a function of the energy of the X-rays or the gamma rays that you're reading. Uh, and all that's given by different manufacturers. There are compensated GM tubes, uncompensated GM tubes. 
But anyway, this is the simplest form. So we're going to take this, uh, you know, this diagram and see how we can map it inside this device. Okay, so now that we know how the uh, GM tube and the uh, Geiger counter works, uh, let's take a look at the insides of the inspector alert. Uh, this is the outside box. Uh, as you can see, we have a display. We have some switches here, um, um, some selection switches, uh, on-off switch, and, and another selection for audio. And then on the back of the unit, you have this grid protecting that uh, mica uh, layer. Uh, so basically, uh, this grid is to allow alpha and beta particles uh, to reach the GM tube uh, without damaging the thin, fragile mica layer. <clears throat> if we if we open that uh, the, the, the detector, uh, this is what you see. Uh, again, this is looking from the back, so that's the uh, mica uh, window right there. That's the GM tube. This the type of tube is called a pancake GM tube, but it kind of looks like a pancake. That's the grid on the back of the uh, of the box, <clears throat> and you can see the anode. Uh, connecting to the uh, to the high voltage, and the cathodes right here connecting to uh, the ground through a resistor. You can see the switches on the top. Uh, this switch here is uh, let's look in more detail here. This switch is a timer. You have a set setting plus or minus switch when you're programming the uh, the unit, and there is looks like a USB uh, connector there that's not mounted. Uh, the processor, which is the main, you know, smarts of this uh, uh, device, uh, with the crystal over there. <clears throat> These two uh, audio jack uh, connectors here uh, allow you to export the signal and also do a calibration. Uh, the transformer and this unit here is the high voltage, uh, using the uh, um, a ladder of capacitors and diodes here to create the high voltage that then powers uh, the uh, GM tube. And there is a 9 volt battery. Now, if we now take a look at the X ray, that's how things look in the direct ray. So it's pretty cool. The high voltage unit here. Let's look in more detail. Uh, you can see through the uh, GM tube uh, that grid that you see there looks like a bullseye. That's <clears throat> uh, the grid uh, for the anode. So that's where those. Uh, um, Ionizing, um, ionizing avalanche uh, are collected uh, to, to create the signal. Uh, and you can see how that then goes through, you know, inside the cathode uh, to the outside uh, of the GM tube. And they go, that's the continuation of the, um, of the anode uh, going through this wire that then connects to uh, the high voltage circuit and the cathode goes on the other side. Uh, these are selection switches uh, on the top uh, that we saw before, and this uh, disc here is the buzzer, basically the, the, the beep for, for the unit. Uh, and finally here on the top we have, you can see more detail, the processor, the crystal. <clears throat> There's another connector here that doesn't have any access to the external world, uh, so it's a uh, probably a programming, a JTAG type of connector to program this uh, processor. Uh, these are the connections for the display over here, and these are the selection uh, uh, push buttons here on the top. Uh, remember that USB connector that's not mounted, and the um, um, timer uh, switches are here on the left. So I hope this was uh, useful and you were able to learn a little bit more about radiation detectors and specifically this unit. If you like more information, please feel free to contact us at uh, creativelacrum.com or you can call us at 760-752-1192. Thank you. Play what you want.